what is the difference between calculating energy as such, like we are, and actually looking for exergy? Well, note that if we take this first state here and subtract the second state, we're going to get energy out. And we've been doing this forever, right? This is something we've done a lot of times before in other problems. But if I want to just know this guy here, the green one, the reversible work, then it's not just a matter of taking the energy or the enthalpy here and subtracting by the enthalpy here, right? Because this really has to do with this um, energy that's lost due to irreversibilities. So it has to do with entropy. And this is where, you know, things are a bit different. Not much different, but just a bit different. Let's consider this exergy now, okay? Exergy, that is energy availability, okay? So if we do that, then obviously, let's consider this guy here, exergy, that is all the energy available on that first state. And we can do the same thing here just for the sake of, you know, uh, nomenclature to keep things the same. And then here in the dead state, we're going to have our that state like so right and the idea is that if i do this then it becomes obvious that if i take the exergy of the first state minus the exergy of the dead state i'll be able to find what is the reversible work there okay but why is that different because now when i'm talking about exergy i'm considering everything including including that term that we talked about before with the s right that relates the uh, temperature of the dead state and the difference, or the delta S, and difference between entropies, right? So now, what I can do is, as per usual, as we always do, I can take the energy on the first state, subtract by the energy on the state that we actually end up after the um, turbine, and we're going to get the workout, and that's fine. But now, I also can do the difference in energy between these two guys here and get reversible work, which, by the way, is what I'm looking for. Okay, so this is the path that we can use to be able to solve part A of this problem. And the other thing that we need to find is the efficiency, right? So we can take out, okay, what is um, the efficiency we're looking for, right? Will be this guy here, right? How much we actually got? So how much we actually got? Actually got divided by how much we could have gotten if we didn't have any irreversibility. Um, could or could have, okay, could have. All right, that's the idea, that's the, the objective. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to play this out? Well, I'm going to write down, I'm going to write down the exergy for state one, all the things that contribute to the energy state one has, and I'm gonna do the same thing for my dead state, right? So let's start with that. So here we have, um, we have kinetic energy, right, so we have the uh, mass on state one times velocity on state one squared divided by two. We also have the enthalpy of the, um, the, the, the first state. And note that here I need to be consistent with my unit, so I need to multiply by the mass one here too. And then we have also the entropy, right? So the entropy on the T1 uh, S1. Right? That's, you know, the, the if I'm writing down the whole thing, we have to include everything that is contributing to that energy there. What about the second state? Well, similar thing. Um, the idea is pretty much the same. We're going to have everything the same. Um, here, except without the ones, we're going to have the knots there, right? T naught and S naught. Okay, so if we take the difference between these two things, we should get what we're looking for. But, but note that we actually don't have the mass, right? We never have. We're never, we were never given the mass. As I've noted at some point, we have a mass as an unknown. But, but we do know that this turns out to be five megawatts, five megawatts. Okay, so I can use that to my advantage because then I can do the difference of energy uh, between these two guys here to calculate the mass. And in this case, I don't really need to use the exergy if I don't want to, right? I can just use the normal energy balance we always do, right? That we talked about before here too. Right, between state one and state two, the difference is just the energy in, energy out, right? So I can use that too. So check out what I, I want intend on doing. I want to use the fact that I know the energy out. I can grab the entropy, I can grab this other entropy, I can... Um, uh, use the kinetic energies, I can uh, calculate the kinetic energies of the two states to be able to find out what is my mass flow rate, 
Once I do, then I can do the difference between these two fellows here with that mass flow rate, and then I can find out what is the reversible energy. Okay, so long way to go, but nothing scary if we do it bit by bit, right? So here we are um, enthalpy one, we can get, grab off the table. Then kinetic energy one, we know that mass one V1 squared over two will give me joules, right? But we know that our tables always have this in kilojoules per kilograms. So there's two problems there. First one is that I can't have this mass or else I'm going to have uh, joules. The second one is that I need to have uh, a thousand, right? Dividing here. So times a thousand here. So divide by 2000. So when I do apply the idea of kinetic energy, I need to do so using the velocity squared divided by 2000, right? That's going to give me a unit of kilojoules per kilograms. And over here, over here, work out, I'm going to get the same unit. Whatever, um, whatever I put in here should be kilograms per kilojoules. In our case, what we have is um, megawatts. Okay, so I'm going to convert those megawatts into kilowatts, which is the same thing as kilojoules per second. And I can multiply that by the mass flow rate. So I'm going to get uh, divide by the mass flow rate, sorry, divide by the mass flow rate, kilograms per second, so that I end up with kilojoules per kilograms. So therefore, to be able to use this equation here, I'll need to do this mass flow rate. Now, would that be mass flow rate one or two? Well, it doesn't matter, right? Because as we know, and we've seen in different videos here in the channel, there is, we can apply the continuity principle here, right? Which states the mass flow rate of one is the same mass flow rate of two. This is always going to be true as long as I have a um, system, a control volume that is in constantly working in kind of an equilibrium situation, right? So what we're saying is as the mass, whatever that amount is, is entering here, it's eventually heat leaving here. We don't have the accumulation of atoms in here, of water, water molecules in here, nor do we have the depletion of water mole molecules over time. So the mass ends up being the same. The mass flow rate ends up being the same for both states. All right, so I'm going to do this whole thing to be able to find the mass flow rate. Once I do, I can do this subtracting here to grab what is the reversible work, and that's going to be part A. All right, so first state is, um, first state is, I forget already, first state is 6 megapascals and 600 degrees Celsius. 6 megapascals and 600 degrees Celsius. I have marked it already down. Superheated. No, six megapascals. Here we go. Six megapascals, 600 degrees Celsius, all good, marked down. And I'm grabbing this enthalpy and the entropy, right? So these are the two values that I'm interested in. Okay, the 3658.8 kilojoules per kilogram and the 7.1693. All right, the other guy, the state two, is 100. Celsius and 50 kilopascals. So let me go to 50 kilo, kilopascals here. 50 kilopascals. 50 kilopascals. And I'm going to note that the saturated temperature is 81. We are at 100. So therefore, therefore, superheated state. Wrong table. We need to go to the superheated table. Okay, superheated table. 50 kilopascals, same thing as 0 0.05 megapascals, and we're interested in the 100. So this is what we're interested in. These two guys here, this is the value for enthalpy, right? and this is the value for entropy. Nice. Okay, cool. So those are the values that I needed for H. And I can go ahead and now solve this equation here for the mass. Where are we? Here we are. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and um, copy-paste this. Okay, and then on state number one, we're going to have um, 36, 3658.8, that is kilojoules per kilogram. On kinetic energy of one, we have the velocity. Velocity of state one was uh, 80 meters per second, so 80 velocity squared divided by 2,000, right, so that we have kilojoules per kilograms as well. 
and we've done this in the past, so this shouldn't be a big surprise for anyone. Um, next, we have this is equal to the enzopion state two, which is we just found to be. What did we find? I forget. Oh shoot! I didn't grab that. No, oh, I did. I did. Never mind. Twenty six eighty two. Twenty six eighty two point four again kilojoules per kilograms and the velocity on state two was 140 right so it got faster so some of the energy coming from the entropy actually in, went into the kinetic energy of state two and then finally over here we have our five megawatts so i'm going to go ahead and say five thousand so that's kilowatts and I'm gonna divide that by the mass flow rate so that we have kilojoules per kilograms, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is kind of, I'm just gonna subtract these two, and I'm gonna subtract these two, and then make my life easier on the math, okay? So that's gonna be, uh, subtraction between the two is 976.4, remembering that this is kilojoules per kilograms, and then on the on the other side, I'm just going to have 80 squared minus 140 squared. And this whole thing divided by 2000 so that I can also have kilojoules per kilograms. And this all has to be equal to the 5000 divided by meters squared. So this is also kilojoules per kilograms. Whew. All right, beautiful. What's next? Um, I want the mass flow rate, so I'm going to do mass flow rate equals the 5,000 divided by the rest. So the 5,000 divided by this sum here, which actually becomes a subtraction because this is negative. Um, so it's 969.8, 969.8. All right. And then this turns out to be approximately 5.156, okay? And then what's the unit? Well, I know it's kilograms per second, but let's prove that so that we're not confused whatsoever, right? Remember that we're putting here this so that this is the same. So what we're doing here in reality is, let me put this to the side. What we're doing here in reality is we have something in kilojoules per second, right? kilojoules per second and I'm just leaving that as an unknown because that's what I'm looking for so at the end here at the end here what I have here is kilojoules kilojoules per second divided by kilojoules per kilograms right which is this unit here so kilojoules and kilojoules we're left with kilograms per second okay so makes a lot of sense and everybody's happy about it all right so now we're moving